On March 4th, 1841, William Henry Harrison was sworn in as our ninth president. On March 4th, 1889, Benjamin Harrison was sworn in as the 23rd president, the only grandson of a president to become a president. Benjamin Harrison was born in Ohio, but made Indiana his home. A tough and disciplined soldier, he rose to the rank of general during the Civil War. He pursued a career in law. Many considered Harrison one of the finest legal minds of his day. The quirks of the Electoral College made Harrison the third man to win the presidency despite receiving fewer votes than his opponent. A champion of veterans, Harrison heartily approved generous pensions for Civil War soldiers and dependents. By midterm, federal spending was approaching one billion dollars. Critics cried foul. Yielding to pressure, Harrison opened once protected Indian lands to homesteaders. Hundreds of thousands raced in a mad dash to stake their claims. And U.S. troops battled Sioux Indians, killing chiefs Sitting Bull and Bigfoot. The slaughter of Indians at Wounded Knee symbolized the end of a struggle that had lasted for hundreds of years. The Indians had lost their native lands, and their destiny was now in the hands of the white man. Historian Frederick Turner would later say, the western frontier is gone, and with it has closed the first period of American history. For some, the frontier lived on in Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West shows. Buffalo Bill became America's favorite entertainer, attracting more than one million people in a single tour. For showmanship, perhaps no one could rival P.T. Barnum, whose motto was, there's a sucker born every minute. Promoter of opera star Jenny Lynn, the Swedish Nightingale, assorted oddballs and traveling circuses, Barnum knew modesty was no virtue. He called his circus the greatest show on earth. Two controversial policies during Harrison's term would later be blamed for a devastating financial panic. The Silver Purchase Act and the record-setting McKinley tariff of almost 50% on foreign goods led to high inflation and a run on gold reserves. Tariff seems like kind of a dull and boring issue today. It was probably the most important issue, though, of the late 1890s, of the late 19th century, as the Republicans said, our prosperity hinged on tariffs. Tariffs kept American business afloat by keeping out cheap foreign competition and helped keep wages high for labor. Harrison shaped a vigorous, activist foreign policy, projecting American power abroad and starting a program to build a two-ocean navy. Economic problems made Harrison vulnerable, and he lost his re-election bid. Defeated, recently widowed, Harrison returned to Indianapolis. He remarried late in life and won renewed respect as a senior statesman. He died at home on March 13, 1901, and was honored with a state funeral. In an election comparable to the 2000 race, Democrat Cleveland actually won the popular vote. But Republican Harrison became president because he won in the Electoral College. Upon her departure from the White House, First Lady Frances Cleveland told the staff to take good care of the place. They'd be back. Republican Harrison became president because he won in the Electoral College. Upon her departure from the White House, First Lady Frances Cleveland told the staff to take good care of the place. They'd be back. Number 23. Benjamin Harrison, Republican, 1889 to 1893, 55 years old, from Indiana. 
Benjamin Harrison was America's centennial president. Elected exactly 100 years after George Washington, the nation celebrated by having Harrison reenact Washington's inauguration in New York City. He was a very good speech maker, uh, but he didn't have much more role than that. And most people thought it was a mighty big downturn to go from a George Washington to a Benjamin Harrison in a short hundred years. Trying to fill the big shoes left by America's forefathers was a role Harrison was accustomed to. One Benjamin Harrison signed the Declaration of Independence. His own grandfather had been president of the United States. They still remain the only grandfather, grandson to be president. He had a tough time coming out of the shadow of his grandfather, who was sort of legendary, William Henry Harrison. While William Henry Harrison had enjoyed fame as a war hero, his place in presidential history is insignificant because he died just one month after he was inaugurated. His grandson would take the oath nearly half a century later. Almost immediately, Benjamin Harrison began to lose the support of those around him because of his indifferent demeanor. Benjamin Harrison was known for having a, a glacial personality. Uh, he was very brusque, he could be very formal. He was described by people as the human icicle. Among the people he alienated was almost every political boss within the Republican Party. They all felt that they were the ones who helped him get to the White House. Harrison did do right by his fellow veterans, but he nearly bankrupted the nation's treasury in the process. His administration presided over America's first billion-dollar Congress. They passed the first comprehensive pension legislation in the history of the United States for Civil War veterans. That turned into a boondoggle, because when the law was passed in 1890, 14-year-old girls ran out to marry these 70-year-old men, knowing that one day they would get their pensions. At the insistence of party leaders, Harrison signed into law the highest, most protective import tax in American history the McKinley Tariff, named after the congressman and future president, William McKinley. As a result, foreign manufacturers ceased to export products to America, and several American corporations gained monopolies on the manufacture of many essential goods. With no foreign competition, consumer prices skyrocketed, and Harrison's popularity with the common man plummeted. This was particularly unfortunate for the president seeking re-election at that time because, of course, what the Republicans had been saying for years is the protective tariff is aimed primarily at helping workers, that uh, we're trying to protect American workers from the products coming in from abroad made by cheap labor. Benjamin Harrison was considered a decent, honest fellow by his contemporaries. He tried to do right for his country, but his policies were a failure in the eyes of many. One of Harrison's harshest critics was Grover Cleveland, and he was about to make the most surprising political comeback in American history. Benjamin Harrison was the first to put electricity in the White House, but both he and his wife were too afraid to touch 